A thank you to those of you who support the channel. More on this at the end of the video. So you want to start a combat only Iron Man. Hopefully in this video, I'll be able to give you a direction to go and start your very own combat and slayer only Iron Man. So what is a combat only Iron Man? A combat only Iron Man, also known as reverse skiller 807, or combat and slayer only, is a self-restricted account type in which the player restricts themselves to the combat stats as well as slayer. They do not train any of the skilling stats and opt to only train combat. So you've just made your brand new RuneScape account. You've logged in and you've completed your tutorial island. Your first decision, even before leaving Tutorial Island, is if you want to be an Ultimate Iron Man, an Iron Man, Hardcore Iron Man, or Group Iron Man. Now when you're playing a unique account like this, there's a few different things that you need to consider. As there are many different ways that you can go depending on which Iron Man mode you choose. For example, if you choose to become an Ultimate Iron Man, you may want to consider doing Wilderness content before everything else, so you can reduce the number of death piling activities you'll have to do in the future. If you choose to become an Ultimate Iron Man, you'll be eligible to do Clue Scroll Juggling, which was prominently featured in my Inquisitor series. And by Clue Scroll Juggling, you may complete a Clue Scroll that you originally may not have been able to complete by obtaining additional clues of the same tier. Normal Iron Man can also juggle clues with the one hour timer making use of a different death piling method. Now, I feel like everybody who's familiar with old school RuneScape knows the difference between Iron Man mode and hardcore Iron Man mode. Ask yourself, do you wanna have access to a bank and only one life? If the answer is yes, hardcore Iron Man may be for you. And of course, if you want to go into this with a friend, alternatively, you can create group Iron Men with each other. And of course, last but not least, we can also discuss additional self-restrictions, such as limiting your defense to one as well. Now, of course, prior to deciding if you want additional restrictions, I would consider what you're getting yourself into to begin with. Think of it this way. You're already creating a combat-only account, which means you no longer have access to skilling stats. Do you want the extra restriction of a defense level or a prayer level, for example? You could go with a one defense build, which means you could get the Elder Chaos robes in the wilderness. You could go with a 30 defense build like mine and go for the Inquisitor's armor set. You could go for a 40 defense option for the Fighter Torso, Rune, and Dragonhide bodies. Or a 42 defense build for Void. The traditional 40 at 5 defense Zerker build also works for this account type. However, instead of getting the Berserker Helm, you'll be getting the Barbarian Assault Hats. And the last point I would probably restrict a defense level to is 50 for the Granite Gloves. Beyond that, personally, I would not consider a defense restriction. Now, of course, I imagine defense as the main additional restriction you may consider, but of course, there are other skills, that of which I will not go over in this video. However, I would urge you to weigh your options. Last but not least, if you are adding an additional restriction to your 807, I would ask that you make use of the Attack Styles plugin and toggle the warnings for the select skills that you do not want to train beyond a certain point. Now mind you, this won't prevent you from actually attacking with that style, but it will warn you and hide the respective type of attack. So you've now created your account. You've decided on what type of Iron Man you want to play, and you've decided if you want to have any additional restrictions. So now you're off of Tutorial Island. What do you do? How do you begin? Well, one of your first options is money making. So to begin your money making journey, odds are you're going to want to make your way to the Stronghold of Security for the 10,000 GP that you can receive from the chest and a pair of cool boots. Keep in mind that at this point, you'll have to have added an authenticator to your account to get access. And of course, by make your way to the Stronghold of Security, I mean talk to Count Check, and he will teleport you there one time for free. 
I would recommend this on all 807 account types, as as soon as you teleport to the Stronghold of Security, you can very simply go to the Long Hall to the north and pick up the cooked meat inside. I would recommend this for all account types, and even if you happen to perish to the Catapult Pawn as a hardcore, you can always remake. Though, keep in mind their max hit is 7, so you shouldn't be able to be one-shotted. Alternatively, if you've just started and don't want to bother with the Stronghold, or have just finished with the Stronghold, you can consider going into the wilderness and obtaining steel plate legs from the ruins. This is a viable method for all Iron Man account types. Or you could also go into deep wilderness and get steel plate bodies. This is recommended for normal iron men as you'll be able to fill up an inventory with steel plate bodies and proceed to die to an NPC and all of these steel plate bodies will go to your death's coffer. Alternatively, if the steel plate bodies aren't spawning, you can always opt to pick up the Staff of Earth, which also spawns in the Lava Maze. Once you have the steel plate legs, steel plate bodies, or Staff of Earths, you'll want to make your way to the various shops listed on screen to sell them for the best price. And of course, once you have some mage or range levels under your belt, Ogress Warriors become a very good way to sustain some arrows or fire strike as well, providing some nice high alks. If you have not done the Corsair curse yet and just want to get straight to money making, another option is to go use fire strike on Zamorakian warriors at the ZMI altar for their steel, adamant, and rune item drops. Now, mind you, having Plague City partially completed will be greatly beneficial as the general store in West Ardoin buys things at a higher price as opposed to other general stores. And last but not least, I feel the need to include the pest control minigame as depending on your defense level, you're going to be doing this minigame anyways. And with each completion, depending on the tier, you will get a different amount of cash. So there's two reasons and two reasons alone that we even bother to do quests on this account type. One is for 32 quest points, and that gives us access to champion scrolls in order to get the champion's cape at endgame, and 50 quest points for a slayer block. Now, at this moment in time, we have access to around 58 quest points, so you don't have to complete all of these quests. However, I will give you a full list on the screen, and you can decide which quests you will complete. Though there are some quests I did want to talk about, because there are certain quests that you will not do, or wait to do, depending on your account. Completing Ernest the Chicken at a lower level unlocks the Killer Watts Slayer task at Vanica, so I would put off doing this quest until you are no longer using Vanica for Slayer. Death Plateau may unlock Climbing Boots, but they will also unlock the Spiritual Creature task which with this account type can only be completed in the Wilderness God Wars dungeon. Holy Grail is a quest which you should only begin as an ultimate Iron Man, so you can always reobtain the Holy Table Napkin for future clue steps. Normal Iron Man and Hardcore Iron Man can complete the Holy Grail, but you'll want to keep Spare Whistles and Holy Napkins in your banks. Another quest that you can decide to put off doing is Priest in Peril as there are various Slayer tasks located in the Slayer Tower which will be locked until this quest is completed. The Creature of Fenkenstrain, the Elemental Workshop 1, the Giant Dwarf, the Grand Tree, Nature Spirit, Plague City, Sea Slug, the Tourist Trap, are all quests that you will want to begin as they give access to additional clue scroll steps, with the Grand Tree also giving you access via the glider system to Eastern Karamja. Additionally, you can begin Dragon Slayer for the anti-dragon shield, but this also unlocks dragon tasks. So choose wisely. We can also complete five mini quests, which I would recommend doing with Alfred Grimhand's Bar Crawl allowing us to auto-smash vials, Barrier's Soul allowing UIMs to store 1k soul in blood runes, and allowing normal Iron Men to automatically bank their ensouled heads, which is a great prayer training method, we'll cover this later. In Search of Knowledge gives you a 10,000 XP lamp, and lastly, Mage Arena 1 and Mage Arena 2 for their mage capes respectively. So now that we've covered quests and you have your 50 quest points for your Slayer block, what do you block? 
Well, if at 80 combat you're attempting to complete tasks for Neve, it's recommended to block black demons, as you most likely do not have the DPS required to do them in a timely manner. And once you get to endgame on your combat only or 807 account, some 807s have decided to block aberrant specters instead, as black demons become more viable when you have higher statistics. Early prayer levels are a bit of an enigma on this account type, as there are two main ways that you should go about training it. Your first goal is to get 43 prayers so that you have access to all of the protection prayers. The first way and most recommended way to train your prayer is to make use of the Chaos Altar in the Wilderness. You see, to the east of the Wilderness is a Boneyard, and in this Boneyard, there are Big Bone Spawns. Capitalizing on this, you can choose one spot and World Hop to fill up your inventory with bones, and make your way over to the Chaos Altar to train. Now, there's two methods of approaching this. The first of which is collecting your big bones from the boneyard, hopping to a free-to-play world, and walking all the way over to the Chaos Altar, hopping back to a pay-to-play world, using the bones on the altar, and once again, hopping back to free-to-play to walk back to the boneyard. The second way is if you have an alternate account with the hard achievement diaries completed, you can walk your 807 account with an inventory full of big bones to an obelisk, have that alternate account with the Wilderness Diary completed, direct it to 44 Wilderness, and you can get your 807 account to the Chaos Altar much quicker. Mind you, there are PKers in the Wilderness, and I hear that the Chaos Altar has been fairly lively lately, so be sure to hover your log out. Alternatively, as discussed earlier, you can go to Archaeus on the Great Karend and train up your magic with some books while gaining Archaeus favor in the library. At 60% Archaeus favor, you gain the ability to reanimate ensouled heads. And I've heard, of course, Hill Giants and Chaos Druids are a good alternative way to train up your prayer. And while we're on the topic of the Archaeus library, it's a good way to train your magic. When should I start Slayer? Is a question that a lot of the 807 clan members have heard from newer 807s beginning their accounts. Ultimately, I don't believe there's one true answer to this, and you should begin Slayer whenever your heart desires. For example, I started Slayer at lower levels. I was making use of the Mithril Scimitar from Zeke's shop in Al Karid, leading up to the Rune Scimitar that I would eventually come to obtain from Zamorak Warriors. If you want to get your stats up a little bit before beginning, you'll have some faster tasks. If you want to get 99 attack, strength, and defense before starting Slayer, more power to you. This is meant to be a side account, after all. So what selection of early game food do we have access to as an 807? We have access to kebabs located in Al Karid and Paul Nivnich, wines for ranging and maging located in Draenor Village. Following the completion of Tree Gnome Village, we get access to the Tree at Gnome Stronghold via the Spirit Trees. And inside, you can buy Gnome Food at the Grand Tree. And the Gnome Food is also a good option for early game accounts. And an expensive but last resort for early game would most likely be the pub located in Brimhaven where you can buy some lobsters, swordfish, and cooked karumbwan. So we don't have a huge range of potions available for early game. However, the Apothecary in Varrock will sell you strength and energy potions with the corresponding ingredients. And located in Shazian on the Great Karen, you can buy Lizard Kickers, which will boost your range by 4. Also, keep the Wizard's Mind Bomb in mind as you progress your magic level as it will scale and boost your magic level accordingly. Last but not least, various herbs can be obtained on the account type by killing monsters. 
These herbs can be cleaned by Zahar, located in Narda, in unnoted form. Then they can be renoted at a tool leprechaun. However, if you carry a cleaned herb on you and wait for the Jekyll random event, you will obtain the corresponding potion, according to this chart. Now, early game gear may shift and differ depending on the account type that you've decided to play. A Mithril Scimitar can be purchased from Zeke, located in al Karid. Once 32 quest points have been obtained, the Champions Guild has you covered on the front of Green Dragonhide Chaps, Green Dragonhide Vambraces, and a selection of Rune and Adamant Equipment. Lowe's Archery Emporium, located in Varrock, has you covered for various ranging equipment. And we can't forget about Daryl's Ranging Surplus, located in Shazian, which also provides iron bolts. Up to Mithril Armor can be obtained from a mixture of shops, including Horvik's Armor Shop, located just north of Lowe's Archery Emporium, Pexa's Helmet Shop in Barbarian Village, and Louis Armored Legs Bazaar or Renell's Super Skirt Store in Al Karid. These are all viable options for purchasing some earlier gear. Once 63 magic is obtained and using the Wizard's Mind Bomb, one can access the Wizard's Guild in order to buy full Mystic. So one of the earliest weapon upgrades you will most likely be killing monsters for is for the Rune Scimitar. And in this instance, you can kill either Zamorak Warriors, located at the ZMI altar, or Fire Giants, located in various spots around Gelinor. For example, the Catacombs of Karend, or after the Waterfall quest. An early amulet you can get your hands on is the Amulet of Accuracy by completing the Imp Catcher quest. Or, following the completion of Trinome Village, you can make use of the Gnome Amulet, which gives some notable melee defenses for early game. So beyond what I've recommended, I would say that you should take a peek at the combat-only wiki page that we have, specifically under the Equipment Progression tab. So, as previously stated, beyond diving headfirst into Slayer at the beginning, some may opt to train their combat stats instead. You can get up to 8 attack by attacking the dummies located in Varrock. The Archaeus Library can be done from level 1 magic, and I would highly recommend doing this until 55 magic for high alchemy, so you can start your adventure at Ogris Warriors. Beyond those methods, Sand Crabs are a viable method for both melee and magic training, though you may find that they are packed at peak times. I would recommend Swamp Crabs for range as they are less packed, Alternatively, if you want to go a sort of clue scroll route, you could decide to kill Minotaurs, located in the Stronghold of Security, which drop Beginner and Easy Clue Scrolls, or Goblins, located in Lumbridge, for the same in addition to the Champion Scroll chance. Of course, once you have 32 quest points completed. And on the note of quest points, the best method that I would recommend for early training would be completing your quests. On screen, I will list all of the quests that give relevant XP and how much XP accordingly. Transportation. Now, some of you may be wondering how we get around. Upon completing multiple different quests in early game, you will unlock a few of these teleports. So at the top of the list and the most accessible to an early account is the Chronicle from Diango's Toy Store in Drainer Village. And this will teleport you right beside the Champions Guild south of Varrock. Following the completion of the Tree Gnome Village quest, you will get access to Spirit Trees. Now, keep in mind, upon starting the Grand Tree quest and getting to the certain point where you can use the glider to reach Eastern Karamja, you will no longer be able to go back to a previous spirit tree as the whole stronghold will be on lockdown. You won't be able to enter via the front gates either. However, this is a necessary thing to do on the account, otherwise you would not have access to Eastern Karamja or the various clue steps that are located over there. Charter ships are a fantastic option to get around the game, whether you're trying to get inside of Port Phasmatis without paying the Ecto token fee, 
or just trying to reach Brimhaven. Though, on the note of Brimhaven, once you purchase a house as an 807 not training the construction skill, you gain the ability to teleport outside of your house, which you can then proceed west and take the boatman over to either Ardoin or Brimhaven. We can also make use of various minigame teleports. For example, we can teleport to Last Man Standing to access the Ferox Enclave for the restorative effects of the pools. We can teleport to Giant's Foundry for access to Al Karid. We can teleport to the Berthorpe Games Room for faster access to the Warriors Guild, and more. And on screen, I will list both of the spellbooks we have access to and the corresponding teleports that we can use. Now, last but not least is the wilderness, and the wilderness contains many items which may be beneficial to your specific 807, such as the Odium and Malediction wards, which are available from various bosses in the wilderness, or their pieces are available, I should say. Creating it in the volcano does not give any experience, and therefore we can get them. The Revenant Cave, which provides some best-in-slot items, including the Amulet of Avarice, which matches the Amulet of Glory T, the crossbow, which is one of the best short bow type weapons which we can obtain. Well, on the topic of revenants and revenant weapons, we have the wilderness rework to look forward to in the future, such as those weapon upgrades and perhaps even a buff to the drop rates of the weapons. And of course, as previously mentioned, the wilderness has the chaos altar to offer, which is great prayer training experience. Almost too good, some would say. And the last thing I wanted to mention about the Wilderness Boss rework is the Void Waker weapon which they are proposing. This weapon will be a good pre-85 Slayer weapon for our account type, assuming that you can get all three pieces and the 500k to have it assembled for you at the Ferox Enclave. I did want to give a PSA if you do plan to make an ultimate Iron Man and want to do wilderness content, you're going to want to pull that content to the front of your queue. You see, if you bring a budget setup and do whatever content you want to do in the wilderness, prior to getting valuable items, you'll save yourself from having to death pile over and over again. And remember, your cash can be stored in the LMS coffer even if you do not have the requirements to do LMS. So you'd like to know some goals beyond just early game, perhaps? Well, my top two suggestions would have to be unlocking the Warriors Guild with a combined 130 attack and strength levels. Following unlocking the Warriors Guild, I would ultimately aim to unlock the Ferox Enclave Respawn Teleport and or complete the Chambers of Zarek with a party, gathering a few points so you get a chance to get your Ancient Tablet, which will then be used on your Zarek's Talisman to unlock the Zarek's Honor Teleport. Both the Ferox Enclave Respawn Teleport on the Arceus Spellbook and the Zarek's Talisman, Zarek's Honor Teleport, both provide ways that you can restore your stats, hit points, prayer, etc. And trust me, you'll encounter various activities, following which you will need to restore your stats. Each milestone will differ per account type. Off the top here, and I bet a lot of you may not have expected this to be mentioned, but the PvP arena is accessible at zero skill total level, and from the reward shop you can buy an imbue scroll or wave slash surge sacks which can be used inside of the wilderness. Most notably, achieving 500 skill total level you'll be able to access soul wars. The soul wars crates contain various items which are extremely good for our accounts, whether you're looking for runes, high alks, or bolts. And at 750 total, you unlock Last Man Standing. And with those points, if you're an Ultimate Iron Man, you can buy looting bags, or alternatively, bolt racks, as we don't have access to the store in Port Phasmatis. With that said, that is all I have to offer you today on the topic of your brand new combat-only account. So, with these tips in mind, I leave you with this. Below, you will find the Old School RuneScape Wikipedia page for the combat-only account type, which you can reference whenever you need to. 
For additional information, you can check out the 807 spreadsheet, which will also be linked in the description down below. If you have any questions, be sure to join the 807 clan chat in the game following the directions on screen. Any mithril scimitar and above can invite you to join the clan if that is something that you would like to do. And last but not least, you can also join the 807 Discord, where you will need to join anyways to request rank ups. And remember, the whole point of a ridiculously restricted account like this is to have fun and experience the game in a different way. Don't rush yourself. So without further ado, I've been Life, aka Inquisitor, and I hope you all have enjoyed these early game tips for your combat only Iron Man. I hope to see you in the clan chat! I'd like to say a thank you to the channel members listed on screen. If you want to join their ranks and get the videos three days early, be sure to click that join button below the video. Up next, the Buy Me A Coffee supporters, who in the past have supported with a one-time tip. Not a fan of monthly subscriptions? Well, buy me a coffee today. You can do so in the description down below. And I think this last part sort of speaks for itself, you know? We've got a subscribe button on the screen, another video that you can watch. Hope this video helped. And if you're going to make an 807, I'm sorry. But have lots of fun. And I'll see you in the next video.